Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 15-year-old student reported the missing from Mavis Bank, St. Andrew. And another alert has been activated for 15-year-old Jahim Pinto, a student of Mavis Bank, St. Andrew, who has been missing since March 4th. He is of dark complexion, slim built, and about 168 centimeters tall. Reports are that Jahim was last seen at his home at about 5.30 p.m. His mode of dress at the time he went missing is unknown. He has not been heard from since then. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Jahim Pinto is asked to contact the Papin police at 876-927-2047, the police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. St. Thomas Senior Citizen Found Dead on Dirt Track the St. Thomas police are investigating the stabbing death of a senior citizen in the parish. The deceased has been identified as 69-year-old Oliver Brown, otherwise called Mr. Shine, a watchman from Bamboo River in the parish. It is reported that shortly after 9 o'clock on Friday night, a resident was walking along a dirt track in the community when Brown's body was seen lying face down with multiple chop wounds. An alarm was raised and the police were called to the scene. No motive has yet been established for the killing. This brings to six the number of persons killed in the parish since the start of the year. 809 new COVID cases, seven deaths. Jamaica recorded seven more COVID-19 related deaths and 809 new cases on Sunday, according to the latest data from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Three of the deceased, a 62-year-old and two 68-years-old are males from St. Catherine. The others are a 79-year-old male from Kingston and St. Andrew, an 83-year-old female from St. Anne, an 88-year-old female from St. Mary, and a 96-year-old female from St. James. The fatalities bring the overall coronavirus death toll in Jamaica to 492. The 809 newly confirmed COVID-19 cases were recorded from 2,918 samples and bring the total number of cases on record for the island to 31,305. Of the newly confirmed cases, 440 are females and 366 are males, with ages ranging from 42 days to 98 years. The cases were recorded in St. Catherine 205, Kingston and St. Andrew 150, St. James 73, Clarendon 70, St. Elizabeth 69, St. Anne 64, Manchester 40, Portland 34, Hanover 27, Trelawney 27, St. Thomas 26, St. Mary 16, and Westmoreland 5. There are 32 moderately ill patients and 35 critically ill patients among the 15,325 active cases now under observation in Jamaica. Fatal crash in Black River, St. Elizabeth. Man killed in two-vehicle crash along Crane Road in Black River, St. Elizabeth. It is reported that a car picked up a skid in gravel left on the roadway and collided into a truck which was heading to the opposite direction. The driver of the car died on the spot. Police investigation continues. State Minister Juliet Cutburn Flynn contracts COVID-19. State Minister of Health and Wellness, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, has confirmed having contracted the coronavirus. She made the disclosure in a lengthy thread on Twitter on the Monday morning in which she said the virus had prevented her from visiting key projects in her West Rural St. Andrew constituency. Having COVID-19 and being a representative of the people has been a challenge, Juliet stated. She did not disclose when she contracted the virus she added, I'm unable to visit my projects happening now in my constituency and have asked my councillors to assist at this time. An incident occurred yesterday, Sunday, and I wasn't able to respond. I'm unable to sign off for any emergencies happening, so other arrangements have to be made. I have to trust items from vendors or just say no to persons in need of help. The two term parliamentarian urge the councillors in the constituency, as well as other parliamentarians, to keep safe at this time. I will watch our Most Honourable Prime Minister's budget presentation at home 
and bang my desktop which much hope as he continues to guide us through this uncertain process she tweeted and with the continued spike in covid 19 cases across the island Juliet has urged fellow jamaicans let us try and continue to do our best to keep each other safe she elaborated to our healthcare workers you are our champions spanish town hospital staff kudos to you all for the care i received i observed your gentleness with the patients and left knowing they are in good hands. Juliet assured that she is doing well despite contracting the virus. Further, she called on Jamaicans to show others empathy at this time. Let's navigate these times with more understanding and empathy for all. To my constituents, I'm doing well and the work continues in my physical absence. West Rural are the best rural. Let's do this together, she added. There has been a raging debate locally on the need for politicians, including parliamentarians and councillors, to receive vaccine from the 50,000 AstraZeneca vaccines, which recently came as a gift from India, ahead of more vulnerable groups such as the elderly in the society. A decision was later taken for the vaccination process to be now focused on mainly healthcare workers, members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and the Jamaica Defence Force with politicians to be vaccinated sometime next month. Elderly persons in care homes are also to benefit from unused dosages of the vaccines in order to prevent any wastage of the drug. Late last week, there were concerns and criticisms over unregistered persons receiving dosages of the vaccine at several medical facilities island-wide, which the Health Ministry said resulted from the use of leftover dosage from vials of vaccine then to prevent wastage. Six ways remote learning changed the daily lives of parents. It has been a year since our children saw the inside of a classroom. That means that for many families, it has been a year of household having to adjust to the realities of children attending school from the comfort of their homes. From parents, grandparents, caregivers leading activity with preschoolers and monitoring tweens who prefer to spend time on YouTube or TikTok than listen to their teacher to older children not submitting assignments and insisting that they are in class while wrapped up tightly under their blanket in bed, the year has tested our collective nerves. Here are six ways parents had to adjust their lives and homes to accommodate remote learning. We converted our homes to classrooms. With children needing space to attend school remotely, Sections of our homes had to be repurposed. Dining tables became desks. Bedrooms were sectioned off into workspace and furniture had to be moved to accommodate desks and chairs. We embraced devices. After years of teachers and principals urging us to not let our children spend too much time on devices, we had to engage in a mad scramble to ensure our children were equipped with devices to assist their classes. From smartphones and tablets, the laptops and desktops, parents were keen to ensure their children had what they need. We became platform savvy. For those of us who worked remotely, platforms such as Zoom and Teams were not new, but thanks to remote school, we were introduced to a bunch of learning platforms we never knew existed. Class Dojo, Google Classroom, Edmodo, and so on are now part of the parent lingo. New use of our phones. For parents with preschoolers and primary school children, phones became devices to take pictures of their children's work to upload to whatever platform their teachers were using. Our camera rolls, which were once dominated by whatever outdoor phone we used to have, now consists of countless images of penmanship, spelling, and math. Multitasking went into overdrive. Parents are naturally multitaskers, but thanks to remote school, we had to go into overdrive. Our days are now split between our work obligations, organizing lunch, remembering schedules, troubleshooting when the internet stops working, or the printer won't print, and harassing parents on WhatsApp groups for the login information for the Zoom call we just missed. We got a front row seat to our children's education. When we drop our children to school, we don't think about their day how they interact with their classmates and teachers. Are they talkative, disruptive, super confident? Remote learning has given us a front row seat in our children's education 
allowing us to see their school selves in all its glory and opening our eyes to aspect of their development we need to address. It has also opened our eyes to the effect and not so effective method teachers use to impart knowledge. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.